Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. You know, recently in the comments, as well as just in my social group, a lot of people have been telling me that I'm extremely smart, knowledgeable in all these finance and stocks and investing things. But to be honest with you, that wasn't always the case. And I still know that I have a lot more to learn as is. So in today's episode, I wanna to explain to you what my biggest investment mistakes were so that you cannot make the same mistakes and be better than I am. Let's get into it. The first one is not starting soon enough. With the rule of 72 and compounding interest teaching us that the greatest returns are long term and it's not how much money you have in the market, but instead how long you've been in the market, I did not start as soon as possible. I really wish I would have started investing when I was 18 years old, but instead I don't think I started investing until I was about 22 or 23 years old. Because of the delayed start I had, it also meant that all the learning and education it took me years to progress and to learn and to know what I know now could have happened a whole lot sooner, as well as all the returns that I've seen recently could have also happened a whole lot sooner. And if I've done my math right, just by waiting those five years from age 18 to 23, I have already lost out on over $30,000 worth of growth in my investment accounts. Obviously that number is only gonna get larger and larger as time progresses. So rule number one to not make the same mistakes I made, start as soon as you possibly can because that number of money I've missed out on in growth is only gonna get larger as the years progress. My second greatest mistake for lack of a better term is I had a meme stock philosophy. Now what I mean by this is when I was investing, when I first started out, I had no idea what the fundamentals were and I was just investing in random companies that I thought were gonna continuously go up. I was investing in companies that I knew people valued like Apple with all the iPhones and computers, but I was also investing in random companies I knew nothing about just because I saw that they were continuously going up and had recently only had a short downward trend. Now this obviously wasn't a huge blunder because my wins kind of outweighed my losses, but had I actually known the fundamentals and done my research prior to investing in any of these companies, I would have really easily been able to tell which ones were just going through a small period of hardship versus which ones had zero investment potential whatsoever. So rule number two, in order to be better than I am and not make the same mistake as me, is don't just invest in the hype and don't invest in what all the meme stocks and the meme companies are, but instead learn the fundamentals and invest in real companies that produce a real profit. That doesn't mean you can't also invest in these meme stocks and these random speculative growth companies, but most of your money should be in safe diversified accounts, investing in real companies that produce a real return. Now my third mistake and arguably one of the biggest is that I never started a budget or automated my investing or savings. When I first started out and first got a job and started to work, I didn't have a budget whatsoever. All I was doing at the time was delivering pizzas through Pizza Hut, using my tips to refill my gas tank at the end of each shift, and then all the money I earned working, I'd either spend it hanging out with my friends or buying video games, and at the end of the week or the end of the month or whatever the end of the period was, whatever little bit of money I had left over, I would then put into a savings account. And once that savings account I had reached $100, I then started contributing to my investment account until that reached $100. And I kept going back and forth, back and forth, slowly growing my savings as well as my investing. Now, God only knows how much money I wasted on pointless, stupid things back then, but it's safe to say if I would have actually set up a budget and set up automated savings and investing, I would have been able to invest and save a lot more a lot sooner than when I actually did. So the third step in to not make the same mistakes I did and to be better than me is to automate your investing and your savings as best as possible and start by creating a budget. I've made a couple videos already on how to create a budget and how to automate your investing, so I encourage you to watch those videos when you're done with this one. Another huge mistake I had was not really being patient enough. Now, those who know me know I'm not really a patient person as is, but especially when it came to investing early on, I was not patient with having to wait days or weeks to start seeing my investments go up. I was expecting the second I put money into this particular company, it was just going to take off and I was going to be rich overnight. And obviously, you're probably smarter than I am in knowing that is just not going to happen. 
What I would do is buy into a trade and it could be a really solid company like Apple or Microsoft, but if after a week or so I did not see any sort of return, then regardless of whatever the price was at that point or the, whether it was going to start to go back up or anything, I would sell it and use that money to buy something else hoping that would generate a profit. Now there are certain trading strategies where this is okay, but I didn't know those strategies at the time and I didn't know exactly what it is I was doing. And selling from Apple to invest in something else, even if I turned a 10% profit, which is still good, had I just waited a couple more weeks in Apple, I would have seen 20, 30, or even 40% returns. So lack of patience in my portfolio and in my investing really paid a huge role in not being able to grow as much as I possibly could have as soon as I possibly could have. So again, learn from my mistakes. If you're not learning and using appropriate strategies like swing trading where you're buying and exiting within a couple weeks, if you're not doing those strategies and instead you're going to be a long-term investor like I am, then be patient. Especially if you've already done your research and analysis to determine which companies are really worth your time investing in, just be patient. Even though you may see some downwards or some stagflation in there, just be patient. In the long run, you'll experience way more gains staying and being patient than entering and exiting trades willy-nilly. Now this next thing, I still consider a mistake even though I never lost money doing it. This next thing I did when I first started out investing was trying to time the market. And overall, I have to say I had way more wins than I did losses, but it's still such an incredibly dumb and risky way to invest. So even though I did see a good amount of success in doing it, I still count it as a mistake and would not recommend you even attempt to time the market. Just because in the long term, if you're going to be a long term investor, timing the market almost always means losses. If you just buy and hold consistently and hold long term, you're almost always going to win especially if you did your research and picked winning companies. The next giant mistake I had was not diversifying whatsoever. I mean, I wouldn't even have multiple trades or investments open at the same time. I would go all in on one company, then when I would sell, I'd go all in on another company. I didn't know a single thing about diversification or how to diversify out into other countries or other currencies or anything like that. I was an all eggs in one basket kind of investor when I first started. And needless to say, this is a giant mistake because one wrong move and you can lose everything. In multiple of my videos, I've always preached, especially recently with how crazy our economy and the stock market is behaving, I 110% recommend everybody to diversify through asset class as well as currency and country. Get your money as broad as possible so if one sector falls, your entire portfolio doesn't come crumbling with it. Now kind of tied in to my diversification problem is I was an emotional investor. And I think this has something to do with the fact that I didn't take the time to really build up my cash liquid savings account and instead it was doing both at the same time. So basically me having the majority of my money invested as well as all eggs in one basket, I got very emotional early on and would panic sell the second a company showed any sort of downturn. I mean, I missed out on 10, 15, 20% days because I sold after a one or 2% loss. At the time, I didn't know how to read 10Ks. I didn't know how to read the candlesticks or any sort of trading patterns. I knew nothing. All I was doing was investing in companies I thought were going to go up and would panic every time they would go down. Another mistake I found myself making quite often is what I like to call backwards investing. Everyone knows when it comes to investing, you want to buy low and sell high. And even when markets are going down, like you see with Bitcoin or any other investment, you'll see the share price go up and down, up and down, up and down, but ultimately trend in either an up direction or a down direction. And in this case, if it's trending down, a lot of people will tell you to buy the dip or buy as it's getting cheaper. What I ended up doing was selling off every time it got cheaper and then buying every time it got more expensive. And at the time, I thought what I was doing is buying on a rally and selling on a trough. But instead, what I was doing was selling at a loss and then using the money that I had even less of now to buy in at an even higher price. 
So instead of being able to buy multiple shares, I was buying fractions of a shares because I was backwards investing. Do not do this. There's multiple ways you can invest. There's one way called dollar cost averaging, where no matter what, every day, every week, or every month, you're putting the same amount into these investments and just passively investing over the years. That's called dollar cost averaging and it is a completely viable way to invest. There's also another way of investing where you keep most of your money in cash and then when you notice things are starting to sell off and become cheaper, that is when you actually buy in. This is a form of market timing, but if you actually know what you're doing and you can see the signals, it's not really as risky as actual market timing. Just make sure if you do this strategy, that you're actually buying on the lows and selling on the highs. You're buying the dips and selling for a profit. Do not backwards invest like I did when I first started out. Now the next one is I did not understand the importance of fees. Once I understood that I did not know what I was doing when it came to investing in individual companies, I thought, hey, it'd be a lot easier to have someone else invest for me. And that led me to mutual funds and ETFs. Now at the time, mutual funds seemed a lot more promising to me. I saw a lot more growth on their prospectuses and fact sheets than I did anywhere in ETFs. So I started to invest my money into mutual funds, not knowing that the three or 5% in fees that they charge upfront would really eat in to all the potential growth I had in that account. So this is just another way you can beat me and learn quicker and not make the same mistakes I made. This way is to avoid anything, whether it's a mutual fund or ETF, that has extremely high fees. Honestly, I think anything that charges more of a half a percent in fees is too high, which quite honestly rules out pretty much all mutual funds and a wide majority of ETFs. If you're going to invest passively and would prefer someone else to invest for you and don't wanna pay advisor fees, then ETFs that cover broad market spectrums are the way to go. They're low fees and automatically diversify across a particular index. Remember, if you're starting right now, your goal is to do better than I did when I first started. Stay away from things that are high fees. Stay away from investing in things and companies that you don't understand. And above all, learn what the actual company does and if they turn a profit and learn the fundamentals. And finally, the one that always eats at me every time I think about it is I sold Bitcoin way too soon. At one point when I still worked for Pizza Hut, I owned 143 full Bitcoins. Currently, if I still held 143 Bitcoins, that'd be worth a little over $5 million right now. But instead, I sold way too soon. And although now I still am considered in the top 1% of Bitcoin holders, it is nowhere near what I used to have. So there it is guys, a short list of some of my greatest investment mistakes that I hope you can learn from and avoid making those mistakes yourself now that I'm giving you ample warning on what those mistakes are. So just to recap, if you wanna start off with a way better start than I had, create a budget, automate your savings, diversify as best as you can, research the companies you're actually going to invest in, and if you don't have the time and want someone else to invest for you, then pick an ETF or mutual fund with extremely low fees that covers a broad market spectrum. And above all, if you find an investment or a cryptocurrency that is deflationary in nature and only has the potential of going up, have diamond hands and do not sell like I did because that was a $5 million mistake. Hope you got value from this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe because that subscription and that like is worth $5 million to me. And until our next episode, have a good one.